Hello, and welcome to the first episode, uh, first Let's Play, I guess I should say, of uh, Building Utopia and Planet Coaster. Um, here, we're going to go ahead and see that Uto what Utopia is. So Utopia is a theme park that is being designed around the idea of a utopia. So, <laughs> who could have guessed? Utopia is being designed around five main areas, uh, being split in half by this river, as you see in uh, being built here, and this is what's going to be called the lighthouse, and the lighthouse is going to be a central building um, in the middle of the whole park, which is going to act as some sort of central structure, some sort of glue to help build the whole park together. But Utopia as a park is being designed to um, help simulate and mirror something you might see in the real world. So what Utopia is saying is essentially, as humans get ever close to Utopia, they never hit perfection. So Utopia is being designed around five areas. Main Street, Enchanted Forest, River Town, Metropolis, and Wasteland. While Main Street is just pretty much a general Main Street area, once you roll into the Enchanted Forest, the Enchanted Forest is kind of a natural feel, and there's a whole lot of no civilization, no humanity, a lot of overgrown path work, things of that nature. As you roll into River Town, we get into Early Frontier, humans starting to develop, and then into Metropolis, which we see the peak of human development, peak of human creation. But instead of actually hitting the, as the name suggests, Utopia, you end up falling into the Wasteland, which would be essentially, um, is meant to demonstrate the idea that humans, as they get infinitely close to perfection, that they will never exactly reach their goal. Now here in the middle, we see we're building the, life ho the lighthouse here, and um, there were definitely some problems I encountered while I was trying to build this. Uh, as you see here, I'm actually trying to place a floor under this little door entryway here. The this, this actual um, circular shape of the tower is not something that was very hard to do. But where, we really, where I really started to run into issues was making this diagonal wall. Because Planet Coaster does not actually support 45 degree angles within the same building. So what made that difficult is each one of those extra walls right there is part of a technically different quote-unquote building. Which makes it very difficult to move individual pieces and very difficult to actually make one cohesive structure. So as you see here, I'm actually placing these bottom pieces here. And I'm trying to find something to fill these awkward, um, you know, triangular gaps. Or, you know, there are actually some square gaps in some cases between these walls. And so I had the idea to use some of these little um, 1H walls to actually go ahead and build kind of like a piece that sticks out in the middle. And will stand in between the wall and the rest of the structure. And so I went ahead and did that and ended up looking fairly nice. As you'll see, I'll actually duplicate it in all of the um, little crevices here. So the light, the lighthouse is end up going to be, it's going to be a building that is essentially designed to be the central element, as I said, of the park. And there's going to be a great sight line coming off of Main Street, as Main Street actually directly points at the lighthouse. So you, as you're entering the park, you'll see in the distance the lighthouse sticking up. But another important element of the lighthouse is it's not that tall. So as I will put as trees and, and come around it, it will not be something that's extremely well visible from other areas of the park when they don't want to be. Although I will say it will be visible from River Town, which makes sense because River Town actually is on the river. Um, here you see me actually going through and placing those um, corners in the wall. And again, each one of these is actually being part of a new building, which is some process that was really tedious and really something I did not want to do. But it ended up actually looking pretty good and actually looking fairly natural. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here and put the top on it. Um, I ended up, what ended up happening with this is I actually came up with some sort of idea using some of the pregame elements in Planet Coaster. Um, what ended up happening was I used actually a water tower. So it's a water tower actual structure on the very top level of the lighthouse. And at the very top level... Instead of having an actual lighthouse structure, I, it kind of looks like a water tower, but it's very overgrown, very old of that nature. So essentially the story kind of that you can see in here is that you have the lighthouse, you have the actual, you know, old brick structure into the newer, newer-esque wooden structure of the water tower element on top. Which I think kind of provides a cool contrast, but at the same time, the overgrown nature of the structure still makes it look very realistic. And as you see here, I'm actually placing windows in each of the four little window slots. Um, how I did this was through a blueprint, and I will say that the blueprint system in this game is something that I really enjoy using, but at the same time, it could be kind of tedious to actually go through and make a blueprint. You have to enter name, description, yada, yada, yada. And sometimes I just kind of want to kind of just copy this item and move it. And you move it using the dynamic tools here. Um, 
So placing windows in here. Another weird thing that kind of showed up is when I actually was trying to place these windows, since they don't exactly fit the rounded structure there, sometimes I was having some difficulty actually moving them as one cohesive unit into the singular um, piece there, into the singular window structure. But I ended up working out all right, and I actually go through individually later and modify each window to have a tilt, so it kind of gives, again, that overgrown look. Uh, and I'm going in here and I'm putting the top on the tower. You'll see that I'm actually going to add little rings that go around at different levels of the tower, again, kind of giving it a little more texture and a little, just, a little bit less of just a, it's legit just a straight tower vibe, which I think, you know, helps play to the realistic nature of it. Um, now here on top, you're actually going to see me make a little attempt to make a little um, little four arc structure with a root, with um, interior roofs facing each direction. Did not work out well, um, and I actually did, as I said er later, end up replacing this with a water tower. Uh, again, trying to angle this here. So what ends up happening, based on the rest of this little island, is there was a lot of other development that needed to get done. So we had the development I ended up doing was by the end of this video, I uh, I had taken the structure and taken individual rocks and placed them all around that miniature island that this piece is actually on. And so the rocks, and I had added bushes and flowers and things of that nature to actually make a very overgrown kind of rocky island kind of look. There's an anchor, there's a little pot, you know, the, the, it kind of actually has a more of a pirate theme than I initially intended, but it ended up looking like something that was fairly realistic and fairly cool to actually work with. So I cannot complain there. As you see, I'm trying to fit this roof here, and it just did not, there was not something that worked with all four corners. I ended up leaving it there, but while I was doing this, I saw these metal roofs, and I'm like, I think I want to implement this down here. Now, the problem with that is there was no really 45-degree angle that would fit, because if I use the 45-degree angles, as you see there, it kind of cuts into the other structure, and just does not look great. So what I ended up having to do was actually put the 45-degree wall, put a 90-degree wall in that corner there, and I actually had to manually go through and use some of these little extra side grates to manually build... Um, the actual downward part of the wall there. Uh, and I was trying to use some of these pieces again. They just look really dumb and tall and did not look right. Um, so some of the overgrown nature of the wall of the building comes from a lot of the ivy structure in Planet Coaster. Uh, I think the ivy is something that's very useful, and you'll see me actually place it on the roofs at the end of this kind of building, at the end of this video. And yeah, so I go ahead and I'm using these good old triangle pieces here to actually build this, the underside of this roof here. And what ends up happening is I've actually placed a bush kind of right in that corner there that essentially makes most of it look overgrown like there could be a roof under there, but you can't really see it. And I think having that nature made it a lot more realistic. Now what happens off this video uh, between here's the next update is you will see that I actually added a bridge towards the left side of this map. Now the bridge is essentially going to be the connection between your initial part of the park which is going to be the main street area which is not being developed actually until much later because some of those buildings and stuff require more expertise and I want to have a better feel for actually what the park's going to look like before I um, go ahead and build that area. But what I did is I built the bridge into the Enchanted Forest. So the next area of development will be the Enchanted Forest. The Enchanted Forest is going to have a very actual similar look to the island. So I think building the island came with a lot of help in that regard. Um, so what ends up happening is I built... There's a wooden bridge that gets built. And the rock line that I apply to this island actually gets applied to the whole coast. Uh, the whole visible coast for now. Um, the whole visible coast from the bridge after it is built. So the bridge actually manually went through and entered each individual wooden piece, piece by piece, to build a wooden frame structure, kind of looking like a wooden coaster structure under it. Um, and after I manually built that structure, I went through and I added a train tracks going over because there will be a train going around the park. And I went through and, as you'll see in the next uh, episode, that I actually started building a wooden coaster that goes to that area so as you see here i'm actually finally finishing up this little side piece here and then i will go actually into the foliage and actually start working on actually making this video the, making this um playhouse excuse me overgrown which i think is a element that really fit well with this island and really fits well with the general theme of the park because a lot of this i do want to make this seem overgrown i do want to make it give it kind of that more ancient feel and give it a little bit of an older vibe so there's the bush going in there. Again, this is going to kind of just cover up some of the awkward awkward um, structure placement and unrealistic looking nature of part of this um, part of this roof. And again, off video, a lot of this ivy gets spread. 
up here. I will say that I've, I'm playing a coaster definitely since I've played this since I have played RCT3 is definitely a major improvement with the movement structure <laughs> compared to RCT3. As RCT3, you worked in the grid format and you actually had to go through and manually, um, you know, get a new piece every time you wanted a different angle wall or something of that nature. I really like the flexibility that Planet Coaster offers. I mean, you can see that I'm using one piece to design all the ivy on this roof, which is something that, you know, is unheard of in RCT3. It would take significantly more effort. But I think the flexibility really allows for creators to really go out and be themselves and to really, um, you know, approach building things as you can see them in the real world. So go ahead and put the ivy on that half of the roof. I'm going to go ahead and spread it to the other half of this roof here in a second. Um, so, uh, uh, again, the 3D movement system is awesome. I really like how you have that, that 3D actual, the three different wheels in three different directions there, and then you can easily switch between that and the three different directional arrows. So it makes it really easy to move items the way you want them to, which I think is, again, a great improvement. Um, I will say that sometimes it was hard, especially when I was placing this ivy, to make sure it was the right height off of the building, because if it was too high off, then it just kind of looked like it was floating ivy, and that was just not something that was extremely accurate. Well, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and paying attention to this video, and I hope, and I will see you in the next episode, and hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.